So here's a question for you. A constant force of 80 newtons acts on a 10 kilogram block for five seconds. What is the impulse exerted on the block during this time period? So if you want to draw a picture, here's what it's going to look like. So here's the 10 kilogram block. And we're going to apply a force of 80 newtons for five seconds. So to calculate the impulse, it's simply force multiplied by time. So it's going to be 80 newtons multiplied by a change of time of 5 seconds. So it's going to be 400 newtons times seconds. Now what about part B? What is the impulse exerted if the force increases from 0 to 80 newtons at a constant rate? Now, if the force is not constant, but it changes at a constant rate, you need to use the average force. So it's going to be the average force multiplied by the change in time. The average force is basically the sum of the initial and the final force divided by 2. So if we average 0 and 80, it's going to be 40. So it's 40 multiplied by 5. So it's going to be 200 newtons times seconds. So it's basically half of the first answer. Now let's confirm these answers with the use of a graph. So let's start with part A. So if we were to graph it, we're going to put force on the y-axis and time on the x-axis. So we have a constant force value of 80 newtons and it acts for a period of 5 seconds. So because it's a constant 80, we're going to have a straight horizontal line. The impulse of a force time graph is basically the area under the curve. And so what we need to do is find the area of a rectangle. So we have a length of 80 and a width of 5. So the area of a rectangle is length times width. So that's going to be 80 times 5, which is 400. So anytime you have a variable force, to calculate the impulse, you need to find the area under the curve. Now, let's draw a graph that represents the situation for part B. So here we have force and time. And the force changes from 0 to 80 in 5 seconds. So at 5 seconds, the force is 80. At 0 seconds, it's 0. And it increases at a constant rate, so we're going to draw a straight line. So what we need to do is find the area of the triangle. So the base of the triangle is 5 and the height is 80. The area of a triangle is 1 half base times height. So it's 1 half 5 times 8, I mean 5 times 80. And we know 5 times 80 is 400. And so half of 400 is 200. And so the impulse for part B is going to be 200 newtons times seconds. Now what about part C? What is the impulse on the block if the force increases from 100 to 300 newtons at a constant rate over a 10 second period? So first, let's use a formula. So we said the impulse is equal to the average force multiplied by the change in time. And the average force is basically 1 half the sum of the initial and the final force multiplied by delta t. Now, this equation only works if the force changes at a constant rate. It can increase at a constant rate or decrease at a constant rate. The rate of change has to be constant. The initial force is 100, the final force is 300, and the change in time occurs over a 10 second period. So 100 plus 300 is 400, and half of 400 is 200. So the average of 100 and 300 is 200. So that's the average force multiplied by a time period of 10 seconds. So the impulse is 2,000 newtons times seconds. Now let's graph it. So this is F, T. So at 0 seconds, the initial force is 100. 
and then 10 seconds later it's going to be 300 newtons. So we're going to have a graph that looks like that. So now we got to find the area under the curve. So what we need to do is break it up into a rectangle and a triangle. So let's start with the area of this rectangle. So we have a, a length of 100 and a width of 10. 100 times 10 is 1,000. Now granted, it's not drawn to scale. Now let's find the area of the triangle. So the base of the triangle is still 10, but the height is the difference between 300 and 100, which is 200. So using the formula area equals 1 half base times height, that's 1 half multiplied by a base of 10 times the height of 200. So 10 times 200 is 2,000. Multiply by a half, that's going to be 1,000. So now what we got to do is add these two values. 1,000 plus 1,000 is 2,000. And so it's 2,000 newtons times seconds. So keep that in mind. If you have a force time graph, the area under the curve is equal to the impulse exerted on the object or applied to the object. So let me give you another graphical question. So we have another force time graph. And let's say the force varies between 0 to 300 newtons. So initially, it's at 0. And then it's going to be at 300. And then it's going to be back to 100. So let's say at this point, the time period is 10 seconds, and here it's 25, and then here it's 30. So calculate the impulse applied to the object. So what you need to do, feel free to pause the video if you want to try it yourself, by the way. We need to break it up into triangles and rectangles. So let's start with this triangle. So I'm just going to draw it over here. So we have a height of 300 and a base of 10. So it's going to be 300 times 10, which is 3,000. And then we got to multiply by a half because the area of a triangle is 1 half base times height. So half of 3,000 is 1,500. Next, let's calculate the area of the rectangle. So the base is 25 minus 10, so we have a base of 15, and we still have a height of 300. So the area of the rectangle is going to be the length times the width, so 15 times 300, and so that's going to be 4,500. Now let's find the area of that triangle. So the base is 30 minus 25, that's 15. And then the height difference between these two points, so that's 300 minus 100. It may not be exactly that much, but we're going to say that's about 100. So that's a height difference of approximately 200. So it's 1 half base times height, so 200 times 15 times 0.5. So this is going to be 1,500 as well. And then we have the small rectangle which still has a base of 5, and the height is just 100. So it's 5 times 100, which is 500. So now all we need to do is add these four values. So 1,500 plus 4,500, that's 6,000, plus 1,500 plus 500. So the total is 8,000. So the impulse exerted by the force on the object is 8,000, newtons times seconds. Now by the way, let's say if in a force time graph the area is below the x-axis. So the impulse will be negative. So the force here might be negative 50 and the time period could be 10 seconds. So the impulse will be negative 500 newtons times seconds. Now here's another example. Let's say if we have a graph that looks like this. So let's say this is positive 100, negative 100, and this is 10, and let's say this is uh, 15. 
What's the net impulse exerted on the object for the first 15 seconds? So it's going to be force multiplied by time. So the area of this rectangle is a thousand, I mean it's a hundred times ten, which is a thousand. So here it's positive a thousand. And then the area for this rectangle, we have a length of a hundred and a width of fifteen minus ten, which is five. So it's negative a hundred times five. So it's negative five hundred. So from zero to fifteen, what we need to do is add these two values. So it's positive a thousand plus negative five hundred. So the impulse is going to be a net of positive 500 newtons times seconds. So just keep that in mind. It can be negative if it's below the x-axis. The impulse will be positive if it's above the x-axis. So while it's above the x-axis, the force is going to accelerate the object to the right, that is in a positive x direction. If the impulse is negative, that means that the force is pushing the object towards the negative x direction.